Some people will say that we're going to add humus to the soil because it is going to stimulate the microorganisms, it's going to feed them something. And that isn't really how it works. Micro microorganisms, the bacteria and the fungi, don't eat humus. <clears throat> if they did, humus wouldn't last for a thousand years. It would be used up. So they simply don't do that. But it does create an environment in the soil by sequestering water and sequestering cations and sequestering anions and pulling everything together that it creates a healthy household for everybody concerned. Bacteria, fungi, roots, and so on and so forth. That's all you really need to understand. This is an example of a, of a uh, soil in northern Arizona. In fact, this is Kim's uh, uh, yard. I was highly critical of her yard the first time I saw it. <laughs> I said, uh, is that the native vegetation on the site? There's no vegetation here. Mm -hmm. Since there's no vegetation there, there's no Calvin cycle. There's no photosynthesis. No photosynthesis, no carbon is being sequestered and put into the soil. Therefore, no soil. We only have dirt. Now, we, to be fair to Kim, this was, we walked off, we walked away from her garden, her farm, and found a pristine, undisturbed part of the property and dug a hole. And so, you know, it's kind of a rugged environment. So here we see an example of the, what we call pedogenesis, which means soil creation, where humus has begun to accumulate uh, about three inches deep on that site in about three years' time. That is really, really an, ex an excellent, probably an extraordinary, and maybe even an unrealistic example of success. But in, in Kim's case, congratulations, Kim. You know, it, it's happening. And, and if you remember back to your school days, when you were taking uh, earth, science, uh, earth science or a natural science class in maybe seventh grade, your teacher probably told you that it takes nature a hundred years, you know, to build one inch of topsoil. And in this case, we saw it happen, you know, in just three years, three inches. Pretty amazing. Okay. So here we have, this is, this is just showing me holding, a, you know, some pure humus, and that's compost, and you can see that they, they don't look the same. And, and I can actually defend my argument by saying, all right, you don't believe me. Let's send that in. That's my compost. I made it. Well, that's... A machine made it actually. I didn't really make it. Um, we'll pass that around. You can taste it and smell it if you want. Just don't spill it on the floor. Um, but if I if I said I want to know some more definitive information about that compost, so I'm going to have it analyzed. I'm going to send it into a lab, just like McDonald's sent their Big Mac in because they wanted to be able to tell their. Uh, I was going to use a derogatory term. The, the people who shop at McDonald's. Um, what the makeup of that hamburger is. What percentage of the calories is coming from protein, fats, and carbohydrates? Then there are labs that can easily analyze that compost and give us that information. You can do the same with, comp you know, with anything. So we send that into a lab and we say, tell us, we want to know what percent of carbohydrates, what percent of protein, what percent of fats, and you will find if it's if it, was, if it was a really, really good compost, it's going to be probably around 90% dominated by carbohydrates. And the other 10% is going to be from fats and, and uh, proteins. Well, that presents a dilemma if our goal is to build humus. Because remember, the only precursor of humus is amino acids, protein. And so if you have that, and you find out that, well, out of the 10%, uh, 3% of it is protein, and I'm going to put down 10,000 pounds of this compost on an acre, or more, 100,000, just 100,000. We're, we're going to be really extravagant here. 100,000 pounds, and 3% of it is protein, what is that? 3,000 pounds. Well, 3,000 pounds is available to be made into carbon dioxide still and humus. Not a 100% efficient system here, so we're not going to make all 3,000 pounds into humus. We're only going to make a percentage of it. So we're going to probably make, eh, let's just say for grins, 50% of it's going to be made into humus, so we're going to, we're going to end up with 1,500 pounds of humus, if we were that lucky, from the 100,000 pounds of compost. 
that's a pretty expensive way to make humus. And you might have actually done more harm by introducing too many minerals, too many cations to the soil, which remember cause the soil to collapse. So we have to be able to know, you know, what's the right thing to do. So my, this is what I, what I say, I lecture all the time all over the country, and I, I have audiences of PhD scientists, top, the top people from Cornell, California Davis, Texas A&M, and so on and so forth in my audience, and I will say nothing else, nothing else can do what humus and mycorrhizae do, nothing. And those two things are more important to keeping a landscape or keeping a farm healthy than anything else that we can do. Bow, 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 bow,